Welcome on board Canada's most luxurious train. But should this be on your bucket list? Find out over the next two days as we encounter scenic vistas, enjoy unmatched hospitality, partake in top-notch dining, and best of all, create unforgettable memories along the way. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from GreenerGrass.com. This is Canada's Rocky Mountaineer, and you're coming along. Here's the plan. We'll leave Banff at 8 in the morning and traverse the rugged mountain landscapes of Western Canada. We'll arrive in Kamloops, where we'll get off the train and sleep in a hotel. The next day, we'll continue on toward Vancouver for even more stunning views. Join us for two days in the rail zone. Our trip began in Calgary, where we'd booked two seats on a bus up to Banff. There's several companies that offer this connection, but we chose the Banff Airport because well, it was the most direct given our schedule. We arrived in plenty of time to check in at the Rocky Mountaineers office at the center of Banff the day before our departure. And that's check-in complete. Super easy, super fast. They have an answer to every question you might ask, but that means we're free, so let's check out Banff. When in Banff, we go hiking. And as much as there is to see right here in Banff, it barely scratches the surface of what we'll encounter over the next two days. Back in Canada for another rail journey. The Canadian was so amazing. We were inspired to come back and see some more by rail. You see, just a couple of months ago, we traveled all the way from Toronto to Vancouver over four days and nights on a route called the Canadian operated by Via Rail. Now Via Rail can be described as the Amtrak of Canada, but today's trip will be on a luxury daytime sightseeing train operated by a private company, Rocky Mountaineer. This trip between Banff and Vancouver is called the first passage to the west. It's safe to say, this is gonna be a much different experience than we had before. They've taken care of most everything, including our transportation to the train and even our luggage, which we should next see in our hotel tonight in Kamloops. Can you see that? <laughs> it's cold. It, it's a cold one. It's cold. We took this trip at the end of September. Turns out it was a great choice. Not only had the first chill set in, but we also saw the fall colors and the first snow. This turned out to be a really special time of year. We arrived at the siding where we board this train. With some 25 coaches and three locomotives, this is one huge train. It's a pretty long train. Uh, we've been walking for a while, we're still not there yet. There are two classes of service on board, gold leaf with the double-decker coaches and silver leaf in the single level ones. Here you can really clearly see the difference between silver leaf and then gold leaf. The cars are, uh, are much different. We'll explain more about the differences in a bit, but for now... It's time to check out the Rocky Mountaineer. It's Rocky Mountaineer time! The seats, which are assigned automatically by Rocky Mountaineer, are located upstairs in gold leaf cars to provide the best possible views. Now ours were at the very front of the coach, at least for today. Turns out they'll be turning the train around tomorrow and we'll be at the back but we'll worry about that later. Also, if you watch to the end, we'll tell you exactly what we paid for these seats and how you can get the best possible deal for your own Rocky Mountain near trip. Each seat has power. They're also infinitely adjustable and they're even heated. Let's just say this is not gonna be a bad way to spend the next 285 miles. Pretty swanky. <laughs> this is really nice. This is, wow, this is incredible. We were off right on time. Back in 1867, when Canada became an independent country, Sir John Macdonald was the first prime minister and one of his foremost concerns was to ensure that what is now Western Canada did not become part of the United States. He did this by promising to build a transcontinental rail link. And the Canadian Pacific Railway was the first link from east to west and we'll be traversing some of the most impressive sections on this trip. Of course, the places we'll pass through have been inhabited for countless years by indigenous communities who have known every river, mountain, and canyon. These First Nations have rich cultures and histories of their own worth a lifetime of study. We were soon invited downstairs for breakfast. You'll sit with other passengers for all of your meals and that's a nice way to get to know your fellow travelers. fruit was a fresh way to start the day. The eggs benedict with the paprika hollandaise sauce looked amazing and the pancakes were delicious too but it was the maple syrup that set them off. My scrambled eggs were excellent. 
It was the double smoked bacon that was a highlight for me. By the way, with sufficient notice, Rocky Mountaineer can handle just about any dietary restrictions you throw at them. Well, that was a delicious breakfast, but now it's time to head upstairs, get comfortable, and uh, enjoy the rest of this journey. Let's head up. We just pulled into Lake Louise where we're picking up a few more passengers uh, before continuing the journey on all the way to Kamloops tonight. The scenery has already been spectacular and I don't think it's, uh, it's, I don't think it's gonna stop at all. Like us, everyone in our car had gotten on back in Banff, but it seemed like a lot of people chose to start here in Lake Louise. It's a small town in Alberta located inside Banff National Park. Now this station, which is beautiful, was opened back in 1910 for the Canadian Pacific Railway. Pretty basic washroom on board, but you don't need a shower. This is not an overnight train. And with that, we were really on our way. We crossed the Continental Divide and the border between Alberta and British Columbia. we approached Cathedral Mountain, which marked a fascinating part of our journey. We're about to enter the spiral tunnel, maybe one of the coolest parts of this whole experience. Um, I've never done anything like this. This is gonna be epic. You see, back in 1884, the most dangerous part of the entire Canadian Pacific Rail Line was near here. It was an eight mile stretch with a 4.5% grade called the Big Hill. It was just way too steep. By 1907, a solution had finally been found, well, back in Switzerland, you see, some 1,000 men spent 20 months building this set of spiral tunnels. They literally spiral on top of each other inside two mountains in order to reduce the grade from a dangerous 4.5% to a much more reasonable 2.2%. These spiral tunnels mark a massive testament to incredible engineering and hard work in a time before computers. It was also extremely disorienting to figure out which direction we were heading as we came out of these tunnels. I don't know about you, but I'm a little turned around. That was quite a roller coaster ride. We continued through, passing through even more tunnels as we made our way further to the west. As nice as our seats were, we decided it was time for a change of scenery. Whoa! Whoa! Anytime there's an outdoor viewing platform on a train, there's a pretty good chance I'll be spending most of my time there. And thankfully, each gold leaf car has an outdoor observation deck on the lower floor of each coach. My uh, Canadian tuxedo is not quite keeping me warm enough, but it's so great to be outside, I don't care. So we're only about two hours into this trip, and I have to say, first impressions, this is probably the most first class train in North America. Yeah, without a doubt. The, the cars are set up similar to the ones on the Alaska Railroad, but it's just, the finishes are so much nicer, and the service is so great. I mean, this you know, is very much Canadian in the friendliest sense. It's gonna be an amazing two days. Pulled off into a siding right now, just waiting for another train to pass. The second group to have breakfast this morning just went down after the spiral tunnels. Uh, so I guess that'll be us tomorrow. I think they alternate who eats first and last. You couldn't pick a better spot to stop and wait in a siding, could you? I mean, this is just perfect. On the move again. We've just learned this is the second longest train of the season, and uh, in part because we're getting some of the fall colors as well as the first snow of the season. We headed back upstairs to warm up a little, but that didn't last too long. What is your favorite season? Fall. Oh, it's autumn. <laughs> it's the best season with yours. 100% summer all day long, except fall in the Canadian Rockies. The Rocky Mountaineer only operates from mid-April to mid-October. Now that's not because of the snow, that wouldn't stop these trains. Instead, it's because of the limited amount of daylight in the winter. They need longer days to showcase all of this spectacular scenery. Now that the second seating for breakfast is done, they've opened the bar. All your drinks are included, so you can really make this a party if you want to. 
The onboard service team was up in the aisle taking drink orders all day long. They were happy to deliver whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted it. We passed underneath the Park Bridge, which crosses over the Kicking Horse River. Now that got its name when a geologist exploring the area named James Hector was kicked in the chest by a horse back in 1858. He was knocked unconscious for several hours, but awoke just fine. And his unfortunate story lives on forever. And we continued through the Kicking Horse Canyon, crossing the river a total of seven times, paralleling the Trans-Canada Highway. Cheers. All the wines being served on board are from British Columbia. It's great that stuff's local. And that's something that Rocky Mountaineer prides itself on, beyond just wine. All of the ingredients they source for all their food is as local as it can be. High quality food is available in both gold and silver leaf service, but the menus in silver leaf are a bit more limited also. If you're booked into silver, you'll eat at your own seat. There's no separate dining room. And those single level cars don't afford quite the same view as you'll get on the top level of the gold leaf coaches. You'll also miss out on the outdoor viewing space we have in Gold Leaf, but you will save about $700 on your fare by booking silver instead of gold. Again, we'll tell you exactly what we paid if you stick around to the end of the video and also how you can get the best deals. Welcome to the town of Golden, British Columbia, home to 4,000 proud Canadians. They'll see 40 to 60 feet of snow here in a year. And about 12.30, we headed down for lunch. We had barely enough time even to check out the menu before encountering Mountain Creek 136 feet below us. And just after that, we came upon Surprise Creek 416 feet below this equally impressive bridge. When passing by particularly scenic stretches like this, the train will often slow down, ensuring everyone on board gets the chance to snap that perfect photo. Lunch began with an impressive charcuterie board, including pickled vegetables from Kamloops, our destination for tonight. I had the pork, they had me at Beats. And Suzanne had the Dungeness crab ravioli. But the chef's special chicken, which our seatmates ordered, looked delicious. And the lemon lavender posse was a nice, light way to finish lunch. We were lucky enough to spot the eastbound Rocky Mountaineer as it made its way to Banff. You know, Rocky Mountaineer is a relative newcomer to rail travel. It was only in 1989 that the Canadian government decided to seek a private sector company who could operate tourist trains through some of Canada's most scenic rail lines. The winning bid came from the great Canadian rail tour company based in Vancouver, which today operates the Rocky Mountaineer trains on three routes in Canada and one in the U.S. One of my favorite aspects of train travel is passing through weather. One minute it's sunny, then it's rainy, and then it's sunny again. Welcome to Revelstoke. The highlight of Revelstoke for me was briefly spotting the giant snowplow locomotive. It's easy to appreciate in the winter when they can see as many as 20 feet of snow here. We're not going to win any speed records here, but that's okay. This is about the journey, not getting to any destination. And the scenery is spectacular from moment one to now. I mean, it just doesn't stop. It just feels so good out here. It was freezing cold this morning, but now it's picture perfect. Yeah, I'm liking this weather a lot better than this morning. It's more my thing. Rocky Mountaineers trains have the lowest priority on these rails. Because they're owned by Canadian Pacific, CP tends to put their own equipment ahead of ours. Not to mention the fact that we're a sightseeing train, so we just tend to wait. But the crew does a great job of keeping passengers informed about how long these delays will be. We used this one to write a few jingles for Rocky Mountaineer's consideration. There are two trains ahead. It's time for bed. When trains are stacked up this way, you just gotta say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> We're on the rail today, so that means it's time for a delay. We were on our way again, and don't worry, we'll keep our day jobs. 
We tried the Gin Rocky, which is their take on the classic Gin Ricky. We were approaching another iconic spot along today's trek. The final spike of the CP rail line was driven here on November 7th, 1885. Today, the spot is marked by a monument and a plaque, which sadly were barely visible to us as we passed by. We'll definitely be heading back here. Another benefit of traveling this time of year is that we're moving along these rivers during salmon spawning season. Although barely visible on my camera, we saw more salmon than we could count traveling upriver to complete their life cycles. Let's just say the eagles had better eyes than my lens. We followed along the Eagle River before reaching the houseboat capital of Canada. Under normal circumstances, this lake would be covered with hundreds of houseboats, just like this one houseboat we saw. Because it was early autumn, the first chill had arrived and school was back in session, there just weren't that many boats out here on the lake. But we loved watching the train slowly wrap around the lake All of the passengers in our car were invited to help create a playlist for tomorrow's ride. Suzanne added Empire of the Sun, but I felt Quad City DJs had the most apropos choice. Overnight, our train's host will make a playlist of everyone's choices that should make tomorrow even more fun. So you've seen us on the Queen Mary 2. Should we try a houseboat next? Let us know in the comments. Do you want to see us on a houseboat? Please say no. <laughs> As mid-afternoon approached, the team had a treat. Time for a wine and cheese tasting? <laughs> Count me in. <laughs> Whether it was an interesting story or a tasty treat like this, the team always had something up their sleeves. Now this is a party. All right, so uh, I'm trying the Pinot Noir. What are you having? Sauvignon Sauvignon. Sauvignon Sauvignon? <laughs> Sauvignon. Okay, cheers. It's very nice. It's a taste of Canada. Mm. Citrus. Acid. It's a great balance. <laughs> Next bird. This right here is the, uh, the remnants of the Adams River fire, which was just only three weeks ago. Now, they actually had to cancel the Rocky Mountaineer trip through here for a couple of weeks. So we're very fortunate to be on here, but it's also extremely sad to see, see the results of this, uh, of this destruction. This fire, which is thought to have been caused by lightning, is just one of so many that Canada experienced this summer. We passed by one of the campgrounds where firefighters had based themselves while fighting some of those fires. And suddenly, we were fast approaching Kamloops, the end of day one. And that meant it was time for a freshly baked cookie before calling it a day. But first, when we pulled into the train yard, we were greeted by a surprise, an old friend, in fact. It's the Canadian, right out there. From here, they'll head on to Jasper, a different route than we just finished. Also, there were dozens of waiting coaches. We were directed to one of them and were quickly on our way to the Doubletree Hotel, which had been booked by Rocky Mountaineer as part of our fare. When we stepped into our room, there were our bags. All right, team, it's nine o'clock at night. It's too late to eat dinner, but that doesn't really matter. We're pretty full from uh, everything we had on the train. Uh, so we're gonna grab some sleep and get up early because we've got another amazing day tomorrow. Good morning, Jet Setters. It's about 6.30 this morning here in, uh, in a hotel in Kamloops. And we're just gonna leave our suitcases right here in the room make our way over to the train and get this day started. I hope you'll join us. Today, we'll head south and west in order to complete our journey all the way to Vancouver. Back on board, the train had been turned around, which means all the seats had been flipped too. We settled in and thought we'd share a few lessons from day one. There's loads of leg room, but my backpack's not fitting all the way under. So I would say, if you can, limit what you bring on board. You really don't need much. There are three things you've got to bring on your Rocky Mountaineer trip. First two, sunglasses and sunscreen. It gets bright up here with all these windows. And the third thing is your own bottle of water. The staff does a great job at serving drinks, but I always like to have access whenever I get thirsty. If you have reduced mobility, Rocky Mountaineer even has you covered. There's an elevator here. 
Take a look at this. There are 707 guests on this train. The consist has 25 cars, including three locomotives yesterday. But uh, it's about time to get this train on the way to Vancouver. Because we'd been in the first group to eat yesterday, today we'll go second. And that meant we started the day with a pastry and coffee. We ended up pulling out of the station about 30 minutes later than planned. But again, a journey like this is not about precision, but the overall experience. And this one was already amazing and was only going to get more special. And we're on our way. Well, sort of. We're backing up and then we're going to change tracks to make our way on to Vancouver. So it should be on our way any moment now, but at least we are moving. We spent all of yesterday on Canadian Pacific track, but today we're switching over. We'll be on Canadian National track. Now, this is the same route we took with uh, Via Rail, Canadian, all the way to Vancouver. But of course, we slept through most of that. So today, we get to see all of what we missed. The Rocky Mountaineer operates on Canadian National Rail in this section because it's much more dramatic and scenic than the Canadian Pacific Railway through here. Now, that runs parallel, but it's on the other side of the rivers we'll be traveling along today. What we're about to see is truly magnificent. I recognize that this is not great, right? Graffiti is bad, uh, but some of it's really beautiful on these train cars. Don't paint graffiti on train cars. We crossed the North Thompson River for the last time before making our way along the Thompson River, which is just the combination of the South and North Thompson Rivers before it becomes Kamloops Lake, before it then turns back into the Thompson River. At some point, these names become totally arbitrary. Anyway, what the particular body of water is called is far less important than how absolutely beautiful this section is. When we experienced it at sunset on board the Canadian, we thought it couldn't get any more beautiful, but we were wrong. It just looks fantastic at any time of day. section through here along Kamloops Lake is some of the most beautiful of the whole journey. This is absolutely spectacular. We eventually had to tear ourselves away from the views in order to head to breakfast. The highlights this morning were watching the light dance in the river while also catching glimpses of the Canadian Pacific Railway across the river. The menu was the same as yesterday. Suzanne had the scrambled eggs, and I chose the skillet this morning, which was a real highlight of dining so far. Anytime we're on particularly scenic track like this, it's impossible not to reflect on the countless people who worked to build it. Back in 1871, British Columbia joined Canada in part because of the promise that a transcontinental railway could be built. However, constructing such a link would require a massive amount of labor and developers turned to Chinese laborers who earned one dollar a day, higher than the seven cents they earned back home. Sadly though, many of these workers were killed in accidents or died of illness as they were building the railway. Today, many in the Chinese Canadian community can point to the work their ancestors did as vital to uniting and building the Canada we all know today. It's about 11 o'clock on the train and the bar is open. They've got just about everything you can imagine and more. It's my first time trying a Caesar. It's the Canadian version of a Bloody Mary. So this is for data collection purposes only. Mm, quite good. We'd entered Avalanche Alley, named for its 33 rock slide sheds and slide detection fences. They're built because this area has a propensity to uh, shift. But we soon made our way out of there and into another geologically significant spot. So this is the merger of the Fraser and Thompson rivers. The Fraser being the murkier one because of sediment. The 
uh, the Thompson being the clearer one because it's gone through cold lake uh, lakes to get here. So really cool. It takes almost a mile for these two uh, rivers to merge. Here, I noticed a mother bear and her two cubs way down on the river's edge. And that was just one of the many animal encounters we'd had on this journey through the Canadian wilderness. It was hard to miss the many bald eagles, ducks, bears, and even mountain goats we'd encountered. Our guides and fellow passengers did a great job of shouting out any sightings in time for most everyone in the car to see them. Nearly a mile downriver, those two had still not mixed. But by the time we'd reached Cisco Crossing, about six miles downriver, both the Fraser and the Thompson were now one. This is Cisco Crossing. It's the only place in the entire country where the Canadian Pacific Track crosses the Canadian National Track. The bridge we're crossing is the longest single span bridge on the CN line with a 425 foot arch span. And just down there, below us, that's Canadian Pacific Line. That's the Canadian Pacific Bridge, the first cantilever type railway bridge installed in North America. And if you're lucky and look back at just the right moment, you can even catch a glimpse of both bridges at the same time. I think uh, it's fair to compare the Rocky Mountaineer to the Canadian. And when you're thinking about the Rocky Mountaineer, uh, the biggest pro is that it's not a sleeper train. The biggest con is that it's also not a sleeper train. Let me explain. You see, on board the Rocky Mountaineer, we cannot leave our car. On a sleeper train, on the other hand, you'll have a private place to go to if you're tired, take a nap, or go to bed. On this trip, we got in substantially later than scheduled on both days and had to stay up until we got to our hotel, which would not be the case on a sleeper train. That being said, the Rocky Mountaineer includes commentary, leaving you with no question what you're looking at. The food is also better, substantially better, than what we ate on board Via Rail. It's just a step up. The open-air platform on this train is also a huge bonus, but perhaps the biggest advantage of Rocky Mountaineer over Via Rail? Well, that has to be the fact that we didn't miss any scenery. Because the train only travels in daylight, you get to see everything along the way. You know, uh, we've been on this track before. When we took the Canadian, we traveled this way, but it looks a little different now, doesn't I it? I don't quite remember this part. <laughs> it looked a little bit more like the backs of our eyelids, I think. And on that note, before long, we came upon one of the trip's biggest highlights, Hell's Gate. This is the narrowest part of the Fraser River, where as many as 200 million gallons of water pass through each minute. That's more than at Niagara Falls. There's even a Swiss-made air tram here that's on our definite must-do list. Guess we'll be back here, too. We received a snack as the first group headed down for lunch. When we went down for lunch, we started with some very tasty flavors of the Canadian Pacific including albacore tuna and prawns. Suzanne and I both had the steak today, which was not only beautiful and perfectly prepared, but it was also so tasty. Fresh berries made a perfect dessert. We returned upstairs where the team had carefully folded Suzanne's jacket while we'd been away. What an unexpected but plus one element of customer service. We were pulled onto a siding to await some passing freight train, and the crew increased the darkness of the screen above our heads to keep the temperature down. How cool is that? The food on board has been really good, and uh, I mean, I think I've mentioned the service a million times already, but it's been beyond compare. Uh, but every everything we've eaten has really been excellent, uh, but particularly the steak I just had, that thing was perfectly cooked, it was really tasty. And dare I say, better than the Amtrak steak? Yeah, it was. As we continued our way toward Vancouver, we couldn't help but recall not only the great service on board, but the unforgettable friendliness of the many Canadians we'd encountered on our way. The warm waves made us feel so welcome as we passed through, encouraging us to plan a return trip soon. We increased our speed as we continued our way south. We toasted the experience before crawling through one of Canada's largest train yards. Soon, the first skyscrapers we'd encountered along the entire journey came into view, and we knew things were drawing to a close. So how much does all this cost? 
We chose the most basic package they offer on this route, the two-day rail package from Banff to Vancouver with a hotel night in Kamloops. Prices vary depending on season and departure date, but we paid about $2,250 each after an $800 discount for promotion they were running when we booked. Be sure to check out the Rocky Mountaineer offers page before you book. They run a lot of promotions. Now you can also save about $700 per person by booking Silverleaf. After an absolutely epic experience crossing some of the most beautiful landscapes in one of the greatest countries in the world, we've made it to Vancouver. Between now and the next time, see you on the rail. <laughs> Suzanne's chewing gum so she can't be in this scene. That's uh, how the sausage gets made. But if you pay attention to our videos, you'll realize Suzanne chews gum almost all the time. <laughs> Rocky Mountain has you covered. There's even an elevator here. The Royal Mountain. Here's three things. <laughs> this section through here, well, you can't see it now, so I gotta kill some time. <laughs> My song's on. But you won't hear it because of copyright. <laughs> it's your song. My song. <laughs> Amazing. Am I accidentally wearing a Canadian tuxedo? <laughs> uh, yeah. Am I mad about it? No. <laughs>